Hi everyone, welcome to AI Crack channel. This is Akash Gangwar and today we'll be studying binomial lecture two. So let us talk about middle term if n is even and the second case would be if n is odd. So let's say we have this expansion x plus y raised power n and n is even over here. Okay. Now we know that in case of x plus y raised power n, we have n plus one terms. So if n is even, then we'll be having odd terms. So let's say n is uh, six. Let's say n is six. So we'll be getting t1, t2, t3, t4, t5, t6, and t7 because we have n plus one terms for n power, right? Now we can clearly see that if n is even, the middle term would be this one. So basically, we have three terms in the left and three terms in the right. So middle term would be t4 over here in this case. So that means n by three, sorry, n by n by two plus one. So this is the fourth term. So n by two plus one term would be our middle term in case of n is even, right? Now let us talk about the second case. If n is odd, let's say this is x plus y raised power n, n is odd. So basically n plus one would be even. So let's say n equals to five over here. Then we'll be having t1, t2, t3, t4, t5, and t6 as the terms because n is 5, so we should have you should be having six terms. So we can see that either this should be the middle term, but there is nothing over here because we have three terms in the left side and three terms on the right side. So I ideally there should be some term over here that should, should have been called as middle term, but we don't really have any kind of term over here. So we'll be taking these two terms as the middle term. So this one and this one too, both would be reported as the middle term. So how do we define it mathematically? n plus 1 by 2th term and n plus 3 by 2th term. So this is how we have to define the middle terms. Middle terms in case of n is odd. In case of n is even, we have defined by n by 2 plus 1th term. And over here, we have defined by n plus 1 whole divided by 2th term and n plus 3 whole divided by 2th. And this is how we have defined middle terms in case of n is odd and n is even, right? Now let us talk about numerically greatest term slash coefficient. So the keyword over here is numerically greatest. So basically we have to find out the maximum absolute, absolute maximum value. It's not like we, we are just uh, mentioning the, we are just considering the positive values and neg neglecting the negative values. We have to find out the numerically greatest, basically absolute values, which are maximum, right? Now that was the first point. The second point is we know that whenever we write X plus Y raised power N expansion, then the coefficient values they slightly increase then they become a little constant and then they decrease. So they might or might not become constant. Sometimes it's just one single value at the top. Sometimes there are two values at the top numerically greatest, not talking about with the sign numerically greatest values. They can be either two or one. So this is how it is uh, for the coefficients of binomial expansions. Okay. Now with the help of this, now we can start the, der the derivation part. So basically, if at the top we have we have kind of a local maxima over here, just like we studied in the EOD, we have a kind of local maxima over here. So that means the immediate terms should be lesser than this term, right? So let's say this is TR plus one, then this term that would be TR plus two, the immediate term and the uh, immediate term on the left, that would be TR. So this is how it should look like. We know that we can have equality, but for only two case, two, two numbers. We cannot have equality for more than two numbers or we can have just one single value. So greater than equals to TR and greater than equals to TR plus two as well, right? So let's start the derivation part. So let's first derive TR plus one greater than equals to TR plus two. And now we have to take the modulus as well because we are finding numerically greatest term. TR plus one can be negative, right? Or TR plus two can be negative. So we have to take the modulus as well. Now TR plus one would be NCR dot X raised power. Now we are defining for X plus Y raised power N. Now remember that this X can be AX and this Y can be BY. We'll do that later, but as But as of now, we are defining for x plus y raised power n. So this would be n minus r 
dot y raised power r modulus greater than equals to n c r plus one because we have r plus two over here dot x raised power n minus r minus one dot y raised power r plus one modulus. Now we can cancel out this and this entire term, and also we can cancel out this. Sorry, this with this, right? So we'll be left with x by y modulus greater than equals to n c r plus one divided by n c r modulus, right? Now if I try to write this expression, we'll be getting n factorial divided by n minus r minus one factorial. Divide by r plus one factorial, and multiplied by n factorial. Just I'm taking this upwards, and multiplied by over here will be r factorial dot n minus r factorial. Now this n factorial n factorial gets cancelled out, and we know that we can write r factorial as r into sorry we can write r plus one factorial as r into r plus one factorial. So this is r. Plus one into r factorial. This r factorial gets cancelled out, and similarly, this one can be written as n minus r multiplied by n minus r minus one factorial. So this n minus one and the n minus r minus one factorial and this n minus r minus one factorial gets cancelled out. So basically, we are left with this looks a little messy, but we are left with n minus r divided by r plus one modulus. So basically, we have got the expression. Modulus of x by y greater than equals to modulus of n minus r r plus one. Now, one thing to understand when we defined n c r, we know that n is always greater than equals to r. So basically, this term is always positive or maybe zero, right? And r is always whole number, so r plus one is always positive. So we can remove the modulus, right? So basically, this becomes we can write this as n minus r minus 1 and plus 1 divided by r plus 1 so this also can be written as n plus 1 why i did that because i want to eliminate this r in, from the numerator we have r in the denominator and we have to find out the condition terms of r we have to find out the value of r to find out the term number of uh, the the position of the term right so that is why we have to eliminate r from the numerator to get a single uh, point in the denominator so that would become n plus 1 Divide by r plus one minus one, right? So this would give me modulus of x by y plus one greater than equals to n plus one divided by r plus one. Now if I take this, I, I just do the cross multiplication. I'll be getting r plus one is greater than equals to n plus one divided by modulus of x by y plus one. Now what I'll do, I'll term this as m. So basically, this would give me. R plus one is greater than equals to m. R is greater than equals to m minus one. So this is our condition for finding out the value of r. Now this was just one part of derivation. This was just t of r plus one is greater than equals to t r plus two. We also have to find the second part. Now I'll just give the result because the derivation is too lengthy. So the result is basically r is greater than equals to m minus one. And r is less than equals to m. So this is our final condition for finding out the numerically greatest term or coefficient. Now this we actually derive for x plus y raised to power n. And m over here is n plus one divided by modulus of x by y plus one. This is our m value, right? Now you can see that we are actually dividing x by y over here. So x can be over here a x and y can be capital B y. You know, if we have to find out the numerically greatest coefficient, in that case, what we'll have to do, we'll have to put x equals to one and y equals to one, right? Why? Because as of now, we are including x and y both. We are including both the terms, including the variables, to find out the numerically greatest term. But if we just have to find out the numerically greatest coefficient, we have to put the value of x and y as one. So we have to use the same expression for finding out the greatest term and the coefficient, right? So you have to remember this condition and the value of m for finding out the results. Now let's look at one question. Find the term which has numerically greatest coefficient in the expansion of 3x minus 2 raised to the power 21. So basically, we have to find out the numerically greatest coefficient. 
So eventually we'll have to put the value of X over here as one. So let's try to find out the value of M first. M would be N plus one divided by modulus of X by Y plus one. So N over here is 21, that would become 22 divided by X by Y, that is three X and Y is minus two, not two only, minus two plus one. So over here, we have to find out the numerically greatest coefficient. So that means X is nothing but one, right? So three multiplied by one. So this be, this would become 22 divided by three by two plus one. That would be five into two over here. So 44 by five, basically 8.8. .8. Now our condition was R is greater than equals to M minus one, less than equals to M. So basically R is greater than equals to 7.8 and less than equals to 8.8. .8. So basically R is eight only, right? Now we have got the value of I, uh, R. So we have to find out the numerically greatest term. For that, we have to do TR plus one and we have to write the general term, right? That you can do. Now let us look at this example. The largest term in the expansion, we are, we are talking about the term over here. The largest term in the expansion of three plus two X raised to the power 50 where X equals to one by five is. So they have given the value of X over here because we have to consider the value of X over here to find out the largest term, not the coefficient, right? So again, we'll be calculating the M value. M value is N plus one divided by modulus of X by Y plus one. So that would give me 50 plus one divided by modulus of X by Y. That would be three by two into one by five, right? Plus one. So that would give me 15 by two. So this would become 15 by two. So this is uh, 51 into two divided by 17, right? So this is three. So this is six. So now the condition would be R is greater than equals to six minus one, that is five and less than equals to six. So basically we have got two values of R over here. So five and six. So if we have to find a term, then that would be TR plus one. So basically T six and T seven, this would be the answer. So you can find out the value afterwards. Okay. So today's lecture was still here only and we have studied the difficult most topic that is the numerically greatest term and coefficient of the manual chapter. And after that, it's quite a cakewalk uh, in the entire manual chapter. So let's meet tomorrow. Thanks for watching.